Good evening and thank you for joining us for Crempton News at 5 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Whitney is on assignment. The future of Avista Stadium includes major renovations, and that's because the facility needs to comply with new Major League Baseball requirements or the county could lose its MLB affiliation. Well, just hours ago, we got a first look at proposed designs for those renovations during the Spokane County Commissioner's Strategic Planning Meeting. Graham 2's Amanda Rowley joining us live from Avista Stadium tonight with the latest on this multi-million dollar project. Amanda? The 65-year-old Avista Stadium needs improvements to meet new Major League Baseball requirements. Now, this project includes a couple different things, uh, new structures, a renovation and expansion of existing ones. Now, today we got a chance to listen to what the project includes and what those uh, upgrades might look like when they're completed. The most expensive Major League Baseball mandated changes for the Spokane Indians affect the playing field, clubhouses, dugouts, and lighting. This morning, Spokane County Commissioners got a look at designs for some of these upgrades, including a rendering for the expanded clubhouse and workout facility. The Avista Stadium project is going to cost an estimated $22 million. The county and Spokane Indians are racing to get a move on this, and that's because these upgrades need to be completed by the start of March 2025 season. If not, the county could lose its MLB affiliation. Commissioner Chris Jordan mentioned this in today's meeting. I think it'd be a shame to lose our team. I know that the Indians we're not the ones that did this, right? That forced the changes. It was Major League Baseball. It's a competitive environment. Uh, and I think it's a lot of benefit for the community to have this high quality of a team with the relationships you mentioned. Now, a new stadium means a new lease, but the county and the Indians are still sorting out that arrangement. The draft version says the county, which owns the stadium, will commit up to $8 million towards stadium improvements. Those funds would be provided on a dollar for dollar match to what the Indians raise themselves. Now, there are a few upcoming deadlines that the county needs to meet this year in order to keep the project on track for completion by March 2025. We'll be keeping track of the county's progress on this. Amanda Rowley, Prep 2 News. Amanda, thank you very much. In the meantime, let's check out the forecast with Chief Meteorologist Jeremy the Good. Jeremy, in Amanda's live shot, you can hear how windy it is outside right now. Yeah, and that wind, all just a sign of our changing weather pattern here in the Inland Northwest right now. Watching some of those stronger gusts move through, and that's kind of the end of it. We're going to hang on to those wind gusts for the next couple of hours, but notice they die down into the teens, and that's quite a bit lower than where we are in the 5 o'clock hour. I really think this kind of 20 mile per hour range right now is the worst of it, and then we watch it wind down. That being said, that's not enough to cause damage, just enough to kind of usher in a new air mass. Temperatures falling into the 30s. Just one hour ago, we were 4 degrees warmer here in Spokane, down to just 36 in Coeur d'Alene, 35 in Pullman, and 31 in Moscow. 40s out in central Washington, and there comes some of that moisture. Notice it's moving in. We're seeing a little bit of activity here in Spokane County, but really not all that much. The precipitation scattered in light in nature. Sure, if you see it, you'll notice it, but it's not much more than that. We're going to continue to see these kind of lighter showers. Best shot at getting more widespread ones. Early tomorrow morning, looks like heavier snow over the mountains and then a quick shot here in low elevations before everything moves out and we get a dry few days moving in. Sounds good, Jeremy. Thank you very much. We'll check back in with you later in the broadcast. Well, the city of Spokane is expected to spend around $100 million on construction projects this year. Creme 2 Shannon Mowdy is live on Freya where, yes, more construction is coming this spring. Shannon? Probably not what people want to hear, Mark, but there is uh, more road work coming to the Thor Freya area, specifically right in this area. But the city says this time around, it'll be less of a headache. With warmer temperatures comes another season Spokane's preparing for, construction season. This year, the city will invest in some new and old projects. So everything together is in the $100 million range um, for the season. So that includes some of the stuff that was already started. And that means the return of road work, including two busy streets that were backed up last year. 
um, you'll see things like the Post Street Bridge get finished um, probably late in the year. You'll see a continuation of some work on the Thor Freya corridor. We're going to do those intersections with Thor and Freya at 2nd and 3rd. The intersections with 2nd and 3rd are set for a full road reconstruction with curb, water and sewer replacements and ADA ramp upgrades. That's expected to cost around one and a half million dollars. It's going to be a much smaller impact than previous. Um, we'll be able to maintain um, at least one lane of traffic on each of the roads. Many of the city's anticipated projects revolve around pedestrian safety, including adding hybrid crossing beacons like these at more spots citywide. That includes several spots along Division, Green and Carlisle, and the Nevada Joseph intersection. We look you know, throughout the city to determine where we need to make improvements to um, allow pedestrians to move more freely through our community, particularly around places like schools or hospitals or places that where pedestrians might collect, if you will, like a grocery store. More sidewalks are also coming. Walkways will be installed near Bemis Elementary, Driscoll, Alberta, Cochrane, and on the west side of Haven Street. I did speak with a coffee shop in this area and they told me that Thor Freya project last year really slowed things down for them, but the city tells me that they um, are actually already going out to businesses in the area and letting them know, just warning them of what's to come. In Spokane, Shannon Mowdy, Crem 2 News. All right, Shannon, thank you very much. And other top stories tonight, Washington State Department of Commerce Director Lisa Brown announced that she'll be stepping down coming up on March 3rd. Previously, Brown had been appointed to that position by Governor Jay Inslee back in February of 2019. During her time with the Commerce Department, she worked toward a solution to close the homeless encampment near I-90. Brown also started the Small Business Resiliency Network, which uses public and philanthropic funding to support small businesses. That included the Carl Maxey Center here in Spokane. Well, drivers should be ready for I-90 to be closed again this weekend in Spokane as crews finish up their work to remove the Magnolia Street pedestrian bridge. Crews removed the center part of the bridge overnight on Saturday. Originally, WashDOT was going to replace the bridge with the north-south freeway construction, but they decided to take the bridge down because of damage and structural problems. The freeway will close this Saturday at 10 p.m. and stay closed until 9 a.m. on Sunday. In your national headlines now, a U.S. fighter jet shot down another unmanned, unidentified object yesterday, this time over northern Michigan's Lake Huron. This is the fourth object shot down over the past week. On Saturday, NORAD took down a mystery object over Canada's Yukon Territory, and U.S. forces downed an object near Alaska's icy coast on Friday. It's been more than a week since a suspected Chinese spy balloon was shot down off South Carolina's coast after it flew across the U.S. Well, the Vince Lombardi Trophy is headed back to Kansas City after their victory over the Philadelphia Eagles last night. But even before kickoff, emotions were high. The game started with a powerful performance of the national anthem by country artist Chris Stapleton. Oh, say, that star For the first time in the game's history, an all-female team of U.S. Navy pilots participated in the pregame flyover, and two of the pilots have Washington ties. Peggy Denty and Lindsay Evans are based at Naval Station Whidbey Island, but then all eyes were, of course, on Rihanna, who lit up the halftime show with some of her greatest hits. She performed We Found Love, Rude Boy, Only Girl in the World, and Umbrella, and she closed out the show with Diamonds, as you just heard. It was her first live performance in seven years. Spokane's Black History was the topic of celebration at the downtown Spokane Library over the weekend. The library hosted a resource fair, live speakers, and performances in celebration of Black History Month. Our very own Channing Curtis emceed the event and hosted a live Let's Talk panel discussion about education. A Black-Owned Business Expo took place before the event, featuring vendors, booths, and resources. And City Councilwoman Betsy Wilkerson says the event was really about making sure the community knows about the resources available to them. I have already feel successful because we have about 16 resources down here where people can come and look and can talk and find out more what's going on in the community 
and people can get information I hope they can use. But again, we're getting to know each other. And later this week, there will be an event featuring work from high school students across the Spokane area celebrating black voices and stories in our region. That event starts at 7 p.m. this Wednesday at the downtown Spokane Library.